Hello students and welcome to yet another class on alternative English. Today we will be doing another poem, The Character of a Happy Life. This poem has been written by Sir Henry Wharton. Now, Sir Henry Wharton was given the title of Sir in the year 1604. That means he was knighted and when you get when you are knighted then you get the title of sir he has written this poem the character of a happy life to celebrate an honest man who is respected by everybody in the society and the honest man himself is proud of himself he respects himself and therefore everyone respects him this man is also honest in the sight of God. Now, the first stanza tells us that if a man is born and taught not to serve somebody else, not to be under somebody else's will, not to be bonded under a master, not to be a slave under a master, such a man is born free and this man would be very very happy because he does not have to submit he does not have to yield to somebody else's will he does not have to yield to somebody else's laws and rules so he is a happy man now what saves him the only thing that saves him is his shield which will be like an armor to him and that is his happy thought and he dwells on simple truth, simple truth. His mind is pure and he is honest to himself. And when he is honest to himself, naturally he will be honest to others and others will respect him. Now, this man who is happy, he has no master to control him, therefore his desires are his own. He is not worried whether he has to serve someone else or not. And since he is honest, since he is happy, this man's soul is very pure, is very clean. And he knows that if he dies, he will go straight to his Lord. Therefore, he does not fear death. He is ready to die at any moment of the day or night. This man is also not worried by worldly cares, worldly problems, worldly desires, materialistic wants, materialistic things does not affect him in any way. He is not selfish. He does not crave to crave, to long for something, to desire something. And he will not use any means to get something in a dishonest way. He is also not worried about public fame. He is not worried whether he rises up or whether he falls. And he is also not worried whether people look at him or not. How he is, he is happy. Now, this man does not envy. He is not jealous of anyone. And even those, many a times, those who don't deserve things, they rise, they get promotions. And the one who actually needs to get the promotion doesn't get it. So he is not worried. He's not worried as to who goes higher and higher or who does not. This man does not indulge in any vice, vice, bad habits, bad thoughts, bad thinking. He's got nothing of that sort. He is not even worried whether people praise him. Instead, he fears that if he gets false praise, he will be deceived and he will get wounded. So he is wounded if he knows that people are falsely praising him. Therefore, he does not want to be falsely prayed. He wants people to be honest to him. How he is, he is. Now, this man wants to rule by good. He has rules of good. And rules of good means... He does his work honestly, he lives an honest life, he is free 
these are the rules of good. He is not worried about anything else. He does not worry whether somebody else tells him to do this or to do that. He does what he wants. He relies on himself. Now, when we go to the next stanza, that is the fourth stanza, we find that this man's life is free from rumors. Since he is honest, he does not indulge in vice, he does not crave for any materialistic wants, any materialistic goods. Therefore, his life is free from rumors. People find it hard to talk bad about this man. And if he hears anything about him, he relies on his conscience. He looks back at his conscience and it is our conscience. It's one's conscience which will tell you whether you are doing right or whether you are doing wrong. And if your conscience tells you that you are right, you can go ahead with it. If your conscience tells you that you, what you are doing is wrong, then you need to retrospect. You need to listen to your conscience. Your conscience is the best guide to guide you. He is not worried about flatterers and he does not feed. He does not feed on flattery. He does not feed on false hope. He does not listen to what people say. He only depends on his conscience. He cannot even be ruined. No oppressor, nobody who does not like him can put him down because he is not worried about fame. He is not worried about materialistic wealth. So when he is not greedy, he does not want anything. He's just happy with as he is. Nobody can harm him. Nobody can suppress him. Nobody can do him anything wrong. Now, in the fifth stanza, we find that this man, besides being honest, is also religious. Every morning and every evening, he spends some time in prayer. And what does he pray for? He prays only for grace from his God. He wants God's grace on him. He does not want any gifts. Now, normally when we pray, we ask, we want our desires to be fulfilled. We want perhaps to get a good job. We want perhaps to have plenty of money. We may perhaps want to have new clothes. But this man doesn't ask for anything. All he asks is for God's grace and God's love. And he says that's enough to sustain him. He doesn't need anything more. And how does he spend his day? He spends his day in a very harmless way. He doesn't look for anything that's going to harm him. All he does is he's got, he looks for a good friend, a sincere friend. And if he can't find a man who is honest, who is sincere and whom he can adhere with, then he has a book to read. And many a times he reads books and he considers a book his best friend. Now, this man, since he is born free, he has been taught not to serve others. He now is free. His life is a life of freedom. He does not have to serve anybody. He is not a slave to anybody else. He is only a slave to himself. He himself rules himself. He is not afraid whether he will rise in life or whether he will fall in life. He is not afraid whether he will have problems in life. He is not afraid if anybody else gets a promotion and not him. Nothing of this affects him. Instead, he is the Lord of himself. He is satisfied with what he has. He is satisfied with who he is. He, is, he may not have lands. He may not have property. He may not have wealth. But he has the greatest gift, his character. And his character is priceless. His character, which is honest, cannot be compared to any worldly fortune or any worldly good, which may be very, very costly in the eyes of the monetary wealth. He controls his own life. He is not afraid of anybody, of anything. His feelings are his own. He does not share his feelings with others. He only depends upon himself. Therefore, here the poet is trying to tell us that if you have a good character, if you are true and honest to yourself, if you rely on your conscience, if you are satisfied with what you have, then 
any one of us can also be a happy person, can be a happy man or a happy woman. I hope you have understood this poem. We will meet again in the next class. Till then, take care, stay smiling, be happy and bye-bye.